Hello and welcome to the third video in my Pixhawk 2023 series. Now in the first two videos we flashed the Pixhawk and did the basic setup and in the last video we actually connected the Pixhawk and the GPS into the Hollybro X500 V2 frame and we did all the basic setup. In this video we're going to take it out of the field and I'm going to do a maiden flight and talk to you about how I go through my maiden flights to make sure that they go successfully. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I see with builders is trying too much on a maiden flight. Key is in the name. It's a maiden flight. It is a normal flight. So trying to fly too far away and then complaining that you've had a fly away or it crashed is kind of your own fault. The maiden flight is literally there just to do a shakedown of the basic pieces. And once the maiden flight is done, and done successfully, and you know that everything is set up and working okay, then you can move on to things like auto-tune and potentially starting your first missions after that. In this video, I'm going to go through that final process. In the first part, again, time codes for all this down below, we'll talk a little bit more about troubleshooting the arming process. That's a common area that new pilots get stuck in, particularly with things like Ardu Pilot. Some of the final checks, that I would recommend that you do with your radio and the Arduino Pilot system to make sure that everything is all okay. The last thing you want to do is go all the way to the field, try and do something and it doesn't work. And then finally we'll get to the bit where I will narrate the maiden flight and talk to you about the different steps and the different flight modes that I use. Again, you'll notice the maiden flight isn't particularly long. It's not supposed to be. It, just there to do a shakedown to make sure that nothing bursts into flames, flies away, crashes, or has a problem. But if you followed all these steps, you should have the same experience as I'm about to. So the first thing to do before we go any further is to make sure that the props are not connected to the model. Take them off and put them somewhere safe. We are gonna to have to power the model from the battery in order to test this out. Also make sure that we have the radio by the side to flick all the switches to test it. Now. Here on the computer, I have con it connected, this time via those telemetry radios that we put in last time, 57600, but I could be absolutely connected via a USB cable. And we can see here on the screen a couple of really good things. First of all, the copter appears to be flat as it sat level on the bench. We also have a 3D lock, which is brilliant. And we can also see that it just says disarmed. There's no other text here at all. If there was, that would be the, something that we would have to look at. Now, when I switched the arming switch on on the radio, we should hear that the beeps happen and we should see it go to armed here on the screen. And now it says armed, the copter has beeped and I can hear and see the motors all turning. If I go disarm, then that is now safe. That is fantastic. That is really good to see. If I did that, or there was something like here called like pre-arm or something else, all you need to do to troubleshoot that particular issue that you may have is go onto the browser on your computer, do ardu copter, and then put in the actual error that appears on the screen. Hit enter and you will find that there is probably already people who have had that issue and the details in the forum or in the documentation will show you exactly how to fix it. Check the second video in the series for the two or three specific issues that I bumped into when I was troubleshooting arming on this model. It is one of the common errors that I see that people get stuck in when they're trying to get this stuff to work. The other thing we need to do is confirm that fail safe is going to work. The easiest way to do that is to actually turn the radio off. And we're gonna watch what happens on the screen. At the moment, everything's happy. We have the battery voltage. We see the 3D lock. We're all tickety-boo. Let's turn the radio off and see what happens. It says disarmed, fail safe, no RC receiver. That is brilliant. Let me turn the radio back on and it'll reconnect. That now means that if we lose connection between the radio and the model, it's going to go into fail safe. It's not going to fly away. That's a really important thing to check. All those people you see in the forums that are complaining they had a fly away is because they haven't done that step. 
don't use a throttle cut on a radio with something like this. Just having the arming switch set up as we've already done it is going to be perfect. Last thing I'd recommend you do before you go to the field is in the setup tab in mandatory hardware, go and select your flight modes. The three flight modes are going to be selected by your flight mode switch. It's going to be flight modes one, four, and six. I recommend setting flight mode one up as stabilize. That's going to be perfect for testing that things like the calibration of the accelerometer is working okay. The motors are going to work fine. They're turning in the right direction. You've installed your props correctly. Once you can have it hovering in stabilize and you have it hovering for a minute and all the controls respond perfectly, then flick it into the second position, set it for loiter. That is then going to maintain its altitude and its position in 3D space. That is going to confirm to us that the GPS in and the compass calibration is all working okay. Once we're happy that loiter is perfect, then finally my third position on the switch is going to be flight mode six, which is return to launch. And you can just pick the mode that you want out of this drop-down list. But I would recommend for the three modes, have them stabilize, loiter, and RTL. And with that set, then it's time to reattach your props, charge your battery back to 100%, and it's time to go to the field. So now you have all of that stuff confirmed in Mission Planner. You know you can arm it, you know you get a GPS lock, the modes are set for stabilize, loiter, and GPS return to launch. We're kind of ready. So let's talk about how we do that. Now, the first thing to think about here is the fact that at the field, we're going to need to wait for the GPS to get a lock. On the Holybro system here, that GPS LED will go a solid green color when it has that, and you'll usually hear it trilling as well. If you have it connected to the ground station by telemetry radios, you'll see in the screen, just like we've just seen, that it says it has a 3D lock. That means that you can arm it. And we're going to take off initially in stabilized mode. Now, you need to arm the copter, the rotors will start spinning, and then as you increase the throttle, you will find a throttle position where the copter should rise smoothly into the air. If it doesn't, then stop, unplug the battery. It probably means that you've got a prop installed the wrong way round, or you potentially have something like one of the motors turning the wrong way round and you've missed it in the setup. Again, make sure that the props are installed so as they rotate in the motor direction that the leading edge of the prop as it spins round is the higher part of it. Typically, props will have some kind of writing or embossing or a logo on. That should always be facing upwards, but it's easy to get them swapped round. Once you have it in the hover, then I would hover it for about a minute or so and just make sure that as you move the roll control left and right that the copter moves left and right and also forwards and backwards and check the yaw control as well. If any of those controls are not responding correctly, lower the throttle, land it, disarm it, unplug the battery and go and recheck all of your settings. If, however, it is behaving itself and it's hovering nicely and it's pretty stable, we now know that the radio setup, right, the accelerometer calibration is okay, and the basics of how the copter is all put together is actually working all right. At that point, I would then pop it into loiter. Now, loiter then starts to use the barometer in board and also the GPS to maintain its height. And even without things like a sonar or LIDAR or something like that to ma measure its height above the ground, the copter, if it's all working properly, should sit beautifully. Now, there are some common things that you're going to see and common mistakes. If the compass calibration isn't very good, then rather than sitting in the air like this, rock steady, it's actually going to start sitting in the air like this. It's trying to start going in a big circle and that circle will get more and more aggressive. That's a big indicator that your compass calibration is off. So I would then immediately go back into stabilize, land it and redo the compass calibration. The other thing to note about loiter mode is whereas in stabilize you're directly controlling the motors to hover, rise or sink, in GPS loiter mode the middle position for the throttle is telling the flight controller to stay at that height. As you increase 
the throttle above that middle position, the copter will rise. As you decrease it from that middle position, the copter will fall. So the fact that you do the stabilize first is really important because the copter actually learns what the hover throttle is and it also then it uses that when it goes into GPS loiter. Now, if in GPS loiter, it's just sat there and it's perfectly level, it's perfectly stable, like we've just seen in the video. And again, I haven't done anything else. Every step you have seen has been shown in the video. The next job then is, because we know the GPS is working, the compass is correctly calibrated, we can actually try the return to launch. So I, what I would do is fly it a little bit further away, about 100 yards, make sure that you have a very good view of the copter. So if this doesn't work, you can put it back into stabilized mode or loiter and fly it back to yourself. But once it's about 100, 150 yards away, I would flick it into return to launch. And what should happen, the copter should yeah. immediately start to rise slightly and then come back towards you. And then once it's over the home location, it will pause for a little while and then it will gently descend to the ground. Again, I'm not touching any controls as this is happening. I'm literally just stood there watching, ready to take yeah. control again no, if it does something absolutely. weird. However, it's working perfectly. It's gonna descend gently onto the grass within about six inches of where it actually took off, which is pretty good. And once it gets onto the grass, it's gonna sense that it's finished descending and it's going to disarm itself. At that point, I disarmed it on the radio and then unplugged the battery. Beautiful. The maiden is complete. We know the accelerometer calibration That's is good. Uh, yeah. We know the compass calibration yeah. is good. We know the GPS performance is good. We know the tune, the basic tune as it's on the model is okay. And we know things that things like return to launch work. So if we're ever flying and we get into trouble, we can initiate that mode and it's gonna come back. Similarly with fail safe, fail safe happens, it's going to do a return to launch as well. And we don't lose the copter and the camera and whatever it is else that we've got on it. So that's how I did the Maiden flight on this particular model. And that's how I do the Maiden flight on pretty much all of my RD copter builds. Now I know that the model is in a great shape. I can do things like an auto tune the next time I go at the field. I can also do things like check how much battery is left compared to how much flight time I had to give me an idea of how much flight time I'm gonna get out of that quad and set a timer on the radio as well. But hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that wanted to watch along with this. Again, everything that I've done on this model, I've shown in the videos. So if you are struggling with your setup, I'd recommend going watching all three of these videos in turn. But final thing again is maiden flights are exactly that. You literally want to check that everything is working okay. And if at any point you try something and it doesn't work, or it doesn't work as well as I've just shown you in this video, I'd recommend immediately stop what you're doing, go back into stabilize, land the copter, unplug the battery, and go and recheck that you haven't missed one of the settings. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.